in that year and in 1980 142 nigerians were honored uh, i'll break here i will give you the details later the president of the federal republic of nigeria president kula jonathan is entering the hall now and uh, that will signal the commencement of today's event national honors award 2010 and 2011. March 24, 1965, at Mbutu Mbobise, local government area of Imo State. He obtained his Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Lagos, Akoka, Yaba, and has attended various services and courses both in the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, and various institutions in the United States of America. He became a press officer to the President of the Senate in 1992. In 1995, Director of Publicity, People's Democratic Movement. In, in 1998, he was the purveyor of the ruling People's Democratic Party. Served as Special Assistant to the President, uh, to the Presidential Advisor on Utilities, 1999. Special Assistant on Media and Publicity to, be pre to the President of the Senate, 1999. Between 2003 and 2007, he served as Chairman, House Committee on Maritime Transport where he brilliantly coordinated legislative oversight functions over Nigeria's maritime sector. In the last two sessions, 2003-2007, as well as 2007-2011, Honorable Ihedioha has been in the National Assembly, and he has garnered an enviable record of service that stands him tall among his peers and contemporary. Besides achieving various tangible legislative feats, Honorable Ihedioha served in various committees in the House in different capacities, contributing his best to growth and development of the legislature and nation building. Some of these include Chairman Ad Hoc Committee, Constituency Projects 2007-2008, Subcommittee Review of the Police Act, Nigeria Branch Representative Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, and so many others, both home and abroad. He, is, he was recently conferred with the Diocesan Merit Award by the Diocesan, Diocese of MBC Anglican Communion and a recipient of several chieftaincy titles. In the course of his service to his fatherland, he was conferred with various recognitions and awards. A fellow of the Chartered Institute of Shipping, uh, awarded the most outstanding maritime legislature by the Maritime Reporters Association of Nigeria, Distinguished Service Award from the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and has been recognized as one of Nigeria's 50 most outstanding legislators. Mr. President, sir, we present to you this fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Food, Science and Technology, a committed family man, for the presentation of the award of the Commander of the Order of the Niger. Thank you. Please be seated. His Excellency, the Senate President, His Excellency, the Speaker, House of Representatives, the Excellencies, the Governors are here with us, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, the Chairman, National Honors Award Committee, Honorable Justice Belgore, other very senior citizens of this great country, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to address you today on this auspicious occasion of the investiture ceremony of the 2010 and 2011 National Honors Award to citizens and residents of this country who have distinguished themselves in various capacities. 
Today is particularly significant because we are gathered here to publicly acknowledge and reward the efforts to the development of our nation. The significance of an occasion like this goes beyond the ceremony itself. It reminds us that our country can only make progress on a sustainable basis through individual and collective efforts. We are a nation with a proud and rich heritage that dates back into antiquity. A nation of great warriors, poets, traditional artists, great musicians, scientists who have distinguished themselves on the world stage, brave athletes and persons in all stations of life with memorable achievements. And just as persons distinguished themselves in the past, Nigerians of today continue to do so in all walks of life, in manners that are at once memorable and impressive. A ceremony such as this recreates that great value and offers us a platform for celebration and reflection. It is this that continues to give us hope that whatever we, whatever we may be, our whatever may be our differences or the difficulties on our part, we can remain confident and that we are a nation of many blessings. We must work harder not to forsake this special feature of our collective being. We must make a determined effort to pull our individual efforts together to build a virile, economically viable, and politically stable country. Our nation will always need men and women of good character and courage in our collective march towards national transformation. Nation building requires the sacrifice of all citizens, both the governed and their leaders. It is, their aware <coughs> it is this awareness that informed our decision to offer ourselves for service for the purpose of creating a new Nigeria where good governance, respect for the rule of law, due process, transparency and accountability in the management of public resources are accorded topmost priority. You recall that on the day of the inauguration of this administration, we made a pronouncement on our resolve to move this country forward through the transformation agenda. The trust of the agenda is to evolve a strong and viral nation through employment generation, poverty reduction, value reorientation, and the rebuilding of confidence. We have followed up with concrete measures and a train of national progress. I want to assure you, has since embarked on a steady journey. I want to seize this opportunity once again to call on all Nigerians to join the transformation train for a better country. For a nation to make progress, we need nation builders at all levels, not nation destroyers, not persons who by their words and deeds sabotage the collective interests of all. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the quest for a better society, we may have to take decisions which will, at inception, be unpleasant in some cases, but we must face the reality, be honest with ourselves, and ensure that we do our best for our country at all times. I wish to emphasize that one salient characteristic of democracy is that it is participatory. It is in the light of this fact that I call on the distinguished recipients and indeed all Nigerians to see themselves as stakeholders by joining hands with us and fully participate in re-evaluating, redesigning, and reformulating the country's development programs. With the certified support and productive partnership of the good people of our dear country, I'm confident that we are well on our way towards actualizing our set objectives of tapping our limitless potentials for national growth and development. I'm informed that since the inception of the award scheme in 1963, from what we heard from the chairman, a total of 3,924 persons have received national honors. Even though the award is the prerogative of the president, the recipients are usually choosing 
on the advice of a National Honors Committee guided by a set of criteria which emphasizes contribution to national development, individual distinction, and merit. The National Honors Award is an expression of a national need to continue to iconize people and identify symbols of public life. I am pleased to know that in this year's list of awardees are persons who have truly distinguished themselves, artists, public servants, businessmen and women, scholars and researchers. I congratulate all the awardees who have today joined the family of National Honor recipients and urge this and every one of you to view this national recognition as a motivation to rededicate yourself to continue with your good service to the nation and humanity in general. Let me also use this opportunity to appreciate our non-Nigerian recipients for your belief in us as a nation and a people. You can be assured that we'll continue to provide a requisite enabling environment to allow you to undertake your legitimate business anywhere in our country. I assure all recipients that your selfless service has been particularly recognized by a grateful nation because you have individually and collectively made, use, made useful and instructive impact. As you receive the symbol of your investiture, you must do so with a solemn pledge to continue to remain faithful, loyal, and honest to your country and to continue to uphold our honor and glory. I would like to commend the chairman and members of the National Award Committee for their selfless efforts in handling such a delegate responsibility. One thing I am aware of is that there have been criticisms of the National Award nomination and selection process. I have since directed the appropriate departments to note the concerns that have been expressed and to take steps to ensure further improvement so that National Honors Award can continue to serve its purpose. <clears throat> National Honors are not merely decorative. They remind us of an important part of our responsibility as citizens. We all must endeavor to do the best for our country, even as we realize with deep humility that all human beings are fallible. We must look forward with confidence and hope that our country, through each and every one of us, can indeed put its God-given endowments to the best possible use. Let me reemphasize again how some of the people are selected, because there are comments from very young people who are a bit confused about how people are selected for national honors. As I mentioned, even the most celebrated Nobel Prize is being criticized. So definitely you will expect criticisms. But in Nigeria, you have three awards, two apparel we gave to today, the GCFR and the GCUN series. And of course, the National, Nigerian National Merit Award. The Nigerian National Merit Award is meant for scholars and not just scholars, but scholars with distinction. And the committee that selects those who will receive that award are among the eggheads. The president plays almost no role in selecting who wins the merit award, because that is for academic distinction. The president plays the ceremonial position of just decorating or presenting the award to those scholars. But the National Honors criteria is different. The National Honors criteria is based on what an individual has contributed to his community, his state, his country, and how you have projected this country outside. It does not depend on how many certificates you have. It does not depend even on the size of certificates. It does not even depend on the status you have in society. And I need to mention that. A traditional bath attendant that probably work in an area where there is no doctor and successfully delivered hundreds of babies can be awarded 
recognized by the president. So a sportsman who is an illiterate, but a good footballer, a wrestler, a boxer, and project the interests of this country globally and win laureates and bring us to limelight could be recognized in this honor series. Also, just like you compare in the case of uh, the military, an officer, a corporal, or even uh, somebody who uh, have no rank at all, could, uh, a private soldier could be given a medal that probably a colonel or a general may not even have for sure of gallantry. And that guided the national honors. So the position you occupy does not give automatic award, except for some position like the GCRO that is given to anybody who becomes the president of this country, or the GCON, to anybody who becomes the vice president, or who becomes the head of the National Assembly, or who becomes the head of the judiciary. These are given by virtue of their positions. But others are given based on what you contribute to society, not necessarily the office you hold. So you can also see that some of our traditional rulers are there by virtue of the hard work done by the ancestors. For you to be recognized and honored, we will want to see you, what you have used that position to achieve for us. Did you bring that office to destroy us, or you bring that office to create peace and development in your domain? So also a youth leader, or a woman leader, or an elder, do you use that position to bring development and peace to your people at your community level, local government level, state level, or at the national level, or use it to bring crisis, destruction to our people? This guide the selection of this honors award. And that is why you see a mixed group of people being uh, recognized. You can see today that we have recognized Aliko Dangote with the, the highest on the GCON series. Because we must recognize enterprise. This is a man who has been able to employ so, thousands of Nigerians. We heard it from the citation. Today, I'm having the GCFR, the highest in the land, by virtue of the fact that I'm the president of this country. But if I'm not the president, another person must be the president. There must be a president in Nigeria. But if Aliko, didn't have that business acumen to build that empire, probably we couldn't have gotten somebody that can employ thousands of Nigerians. So those who, by their innate abilities and creative energies, have been able to create impact in our society, even deserve more honor than those of us who are holding political offices. So we we'll continue to encourage enterprise we continue to encourage creativity. We continue to encourage Nigerians who have excelled in whatever form. A welder, electrician, or anybody who by virtue of what you do, you've done it with much dedication and impacted society significantly, who can be honored by the president. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me once again heartily congratulate all the awardees their friends and families on behalf of the government and good people of Nigeria, and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I thank you all. Lead us as we follow regarding the proceedings of this. Thank you.